Aloha and welcome to Movement Matters. I'm your host, Christine Linders. I'm back in the office and treating patients at East Oahu Physical Therapy, but many are still at home if they are not essential workers. Some have been laid off or know someone who has, which brings more concern and even more fear and anxiety into our lives or the lives of our loved ones. As a physical therapist, my primary concern during this COVID crisis has been the potential for poor posture problems and injuries while being more sedentary at home. But fear and anxiety adds others as this added stress can make us more vulnerable to pain and injury. Today, we'll be talking about the risks poor posture at home presents to our bodies as adults and children, as well as strategies to improve posture using breath and decrease fear and anxiety. I'm grateful to have Dr. Mary Massery joining us today. Dr. Massery has been a physical therapist for over 43 years, achieved her doctorate in physical therapy as well as her doctor of science, and has been invited to give over 900 presentations in the United States, as well as 18 countries abroad. Her research pioneered the concept of managing trunk pressures as a new way to visualize core stabilization. She's earned the highest of honors at the American Physical Therapy Association Awards, the Florence Kendall Practice Award for outstanding and enduring contribution to the practice of physical therapy. And recently, Dr. Massery prepared a critical webinar to physical therapists on important rehab considerations for treating the post-COVID-19 patient. Welcome back, Mary. Thanks, Kristen. I'm so glad to have you back. So I am back to work and I'm hearing from colleagues and patients about hunching over laptops and frustration with their kids hunching over their, their laptops and devices as they're now homeschooling and then they're playing on their games at home and all the variety of problems that are associated with that. And you're such a master of the diaphragm that I wanted to tie it in with postural control and breathing and stress and anxiety and breathing. What kind of tips or go-tos or ideas do you have for some of these parents and kids at home to help with that? <clears throat> it's a really loaded question. Uh, the apologize. first thing I'd like to do is to say, let's just get rid of the virus. Could we, could someone oh, get a vaccine please soon so we can uh, go back to more normal lives? Uh, of course, we're going to have a new wonderful. normal. Yeah, it's going to be a yeah. new normal. It's not going to be the old normal. We'll see where it goes. But with that, I think we do need to be considering stress and anxiety and posture for the families that are working at home, the kids who are homeschooled, not by choice at this point, but out of necessity, uh, they don't necessarily have desks and chairs that fit everyone. So being able to take some breaks, to even being able to take some time to say, could I put a book under the computer to be able to raise the computer up? Uh, could I use a different chair? Is there some way that I can switch one kid with another kid's past, um, that postural setup in order to improve their posture. It won't be perfect, but could it be better? And one of the things that you and I have talked about is if you're having difficulty breathing because you're so hunched over, and I know you've got a couple of pictures there that might help remind people of what we really look like at home right now. Uh, this would be just a great picture of someone, of There's one. dad, working at the kid's table and saying, no, it's going to work well. It's like, no, it's not. And doing a little bit of slouching, slouching now and again is perfectly fine. The problem is when you're going to school or mm -hmm. going to school or going to work all day in this slouch posture, it does tend to fold you right at the point of your diaphragm where you would normally be able to e expand that diaphragm, take a nice big breath, not only to get air, but also perhaps to be able to calm yourself. But if you could take that deep breath in every so often and even just say, okay, this is really tough. I'm trying to do a test online as a school kid or my little brother is running in and out of the room and I'm having a hard time hearing my teacher. Could you just get in a nice position take that nice cleansing breath and maybe help to reduce your stress a little bit. 
it's not going to cure the virus. It's not going to cure all of your anxiety. But what if it was one more piece in the puzzle to be able to help? I think that's so well put. I was even suggesting to one of my patients who works with young kids, she happens to be an occupational therapist that works with very young children who have postural problems and she has to make it a game. And so I said, yeah, it's easy for me. I'm mostly adults or teens. And so the teens and young adolescents, I can make it more of a fun exercise game. But for, mm -hmm. for very young children, I was telling her like, how about we, you know, or taking a big breath and they, like just something to improve their posture, make them take that deep breath. Kids are so great at playing and mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of fun for us to come up with some of those things. So have you seen, you're, you've been at home now, are you doing anything with your family or are they just naturally in good posture because they know who you are uh, <laughs> and that no, you'll be out? So we are quarantining uh, my husband and I, and then my daughter, Gina, and her husband and their two young kids. They have a two-year-old who I think ran into the show on one of the prior uh, days, and then a newborn baby. So we do have oh. quite a, a household. And even with that, you're now juggling who sits in normal places, um, who gets the desk to be able to work on their computer, who's got to hold a baby while holding the computer and things are not ideal. It's just not ideal. It's the way it goes. But some of the things people could be thinking of to just try to help with their, their posture, their general mobility, and again, maybe helping to relieve some anxiety and stress is to be thinking of their whole trunk from the pelvic floor all the way up to their neck and recognizing that the muscles of your chest wall here, the intercostal muscles, those are the deep muscles that are along the ribs, they are primary rotators of the trunk. So when you rotate your body to reach to the, your left or reach to your right, you should be taking a nice deep breath with it. So you'll be using your diaphragm at the base or in, well, the base of the lungs, which is in the middle of your trunk, and your intercostal muscles all the way around your chest. That's going to help you rotate, help you have mobility, and help you take a deeper breath. So it could be the kind of thing that helps to relieve some stress simply because you'll be able to breathe with less effort rather than more. And because we tend to be hunched over in doing either our computers or our video games here, what we really lack on a common day when we're stuck at home is that ability to rotate. So if I were a physical therapist working with kids or adults, I would be including in their activities every day some kind of activities where the arm comes up and out, but while they're sitting right on their sits bones, so right on those butt bones, not slouched backwards, and very importantly, that they are following with their eyes. Because if I just bring my arm back here, that's actually just a shoulder activity. But if I have to watch, I don't know if you can pull back a little bit, Eric. I can, so I'll pull back. Uh, well, you still can't see my hand. So pretend you can see my hand, otherwise I'm disconnected from the audio. So if I have my arm up here and I look while I turn, that is now a trunk movement, and that's going to go from the pelvic floor all the way up to the shoulders and up to the neck, which can be just a, a beautiful stretch, beautiful rotation for taking that uh, deep breath in and helping posture as well as stretch. And a real key, a real key component is elbows straight. So I don't know, did we do this one before? I can't remember if we did this. No, either. we did so, not. Okay. We this is a really fun one to do. So if everyone would just pull back from your seats and for Christine, you're standing, aren't you? I'm sitting. <laughs> oh, you're sitting. Can you stand and move back? Cause I'll have you be my demo since you're not wired in. Good thing I don't have shorts on like that one guy that was all dressed up in a suit on top and had his little boxers and they had nothing but boxers right perfect okay now nope i want you back where you were that's perfect right there 
Okay, so what I want you to do, we're gonna link your shoulders to your trunk, to all those muscles here. And we'll first do it just in a straight plane. So I want you to bring your thumbs forward, elbows are straight. And so all the people out there, I want you doing the same thing. Lift your arms straight up to the ceiling, just as high as they go, okay? Good, and come back down. That was perfect. Now stay right there though. I mean, don't leave your spot. Do it this time and tell me, tell me whether you automatically inhaled, exhaled, or did nothing. So arms up, elbows straight. Oh, your elbows weren't straight. Bring those arms back down. Okay, just need like to go not. over this again. Thumbs forward, elbows straight, arms up. Okay, and down. What did you do? Inhale, exhale, or do nothing? You inhale. And that's, and that's because we linked your chest to your shoulders. Now, I want you to purposely do it with kind of lazy bent elbows. So coming up just kind of like this, right, okay? And feel the difference. Did you inhale, exhale, or do nothing? I almost felt like I exhaled. <laughs> so exhaling or doing nothing is the wrong answer. Yeah, but that's step. because with your elbows, with your elbows bent, you're not actually mechanically linking your shoulders to your rib cage. So if you want someone to take a nice deep breath and you're using the arm as the conduit to make it easier for that to occur, you need to have the elbow straight and not bent. So let's do this. You're ready to do it again? Okay, ready. thumbs are forward so that your arm is slightly externally rotated. Elbows are straight. This time, take a nice deep breath as you come up. Bring those arms all the way up wow. and then blow it out and come down. That's easy to do. Now you're going to do the same thing, only you're going to do it with just one arm. So thumbs are just facing forward, like facing me from where you are. You're going to bring only your right arm up and follow your right arm with your eyes. Oh, with wow. your eyes. There you go. Now you have beautiful rotation. Bring it back down and exhale. Keep your elbow straight. That's really important. Elbow straight, beautiful. Blow it out and come down. Now this costs nothing, zero, nothing. Maybe you could have your patients or their families do it a few times an hour. Every time you take yep. a break, why don't you do three to the right and three to the left and get that nice cleansing breath in. You also should have felt that when you did that nice arm raise up with the straight elbow, that it actually brought your spine into beautiful extension and rotation. So if you're trying to get their posture to be in a better position, that simple activity might be something that helps to cue them. Okay, you can come back. Thank you for being my demo. That felt great, man. And you noticed right away my little lack of range of motion from my right yeah, shoulder surgery. To work on I that. try to work on that, but yeah, I could feel the uh, the right one a lot of stretching in my right flank and my right rib cage, and then mm -hmm. with the left one, it just felt very good and very open. And that's a beautiful stretch for people to do. And you know what else happened? What I get nervous for these shows, and I just felt all of it go away when I breathe. Great. And I came down. It not only felt good, but I feel uh, I feel calm. Good. I need to do this on every show. <laughs> <laughs> so something else that I would tag on to that is thinking for physical therapists in particular who deal in orthopedics. They're going to have tons of patients who have different shoulder problems. And very often the patients are going to come in saying, you know, my right shoulder, my left shoulder hurts and the physical therapist is going to treat that shoulder. What if that shoulder was actually problematic because nothing moved in the rib cage? So anytime a physical therapist is working with the shoulder, to me, the first thing they should be saying is, what about their breathing? What about their rib cage? What about their spine? Because this I call it the saddle on the horse. It's just sitting on top of the trunk. And if the mm -hmm. trunk isn't in the right alignment, then the saddle can't be in the right alignment. So the shoulder might be what's hurting, but the problem could be their breathing, their spine, their pelvis, something else. 
So I love that you said that. I hope everybody is taking notes or is going to watch this back and write it again. Uh, I've been back to work since May 1st and I've been doing a lot more breathing things as I'm back because I'm the only one in the clinic. I can think a little better when there's not a lot of action going around me with the other therapists and their patients and the noise. Mm -hmm. And so I've been looking at a lot more things outside of the box with my neck patients and with my scoliosis patients, I do a lot of it, but I've been having some of the ones that I can't get them to open their rib cage on the, the side that's more compressed. I've been having them lay on their side and use arm movement overhead while they take Beautiful. an inhale. And one of my patients Beautiful. that I used is three in the morning. One of them's the OT, and she said that was a great session this morning. I had to adjust my rearview mirror when I sat in my car because I was taller. And that's, isn't that I, fantastic? Yep, that's great. She said that when I had treated her last year at a different clinic. We've reunited again, but uh, I remember her saying something about the rear view mirror and she knows when she's up tall, but that was the first time that something that I did, she immediately said, I need to do that every day. I couldn't believe how good I felt. Her low back was her pain complaint, but she has a large curve in her middle and uh, her midsection, the thoracic section. But doing that really gave her a great day and she does work with very small kids. So she's on the floor, uh, mobilizing over. them. Yeah. You, you do that as well, right? You work with youngsters. I do, but I now use a treatment table. I've had too many knee surgeries myself. I'm not working on the floor. <laughs> I get to do that after 43 years. I get to say, no, sorry, I'm not working on the floor anymore. <laughs> but that's, that's just my situation. I would come back to your patient again and say, when you're doing that sidewards bending and the arm coming up, make sure you're telling them elbow straight and only coming up as high as they can with the elbow straight. So if they have to come up and then bend their arm here and say, no, no, that's okay. The goal isn't that you came all the way over. The goal is that you came up as high as your mechanics would allow and pull that breathing into it. And then, you know, maybe they need some rib mobilizations or spine mobilizations. There's lots of other things they need besides breathing. Just don't forget breathing is a really important part. I think Christine, that's... Why don't we pull up Matthew's case just so they can kind of see the dramatic difference? Because I think that would be nice uh, for them to see, even though a lot of people of your viewers don't have children of their own with cerebral palsy or don't treat kids with cerebral yep. palsy, but I think it really makes the point and it's a little bit more dramatic than just everyday postural problems. I was hoping you would say that. I, I okay. was thinking the same thing. Matthew's case would be great. So Eric, do you want to pull up, uh, I think it's the first one, 1A. Yeah. All right. So if you can look on the far left side, that is Matthew when he was one and a half years old. Mm -hmm. He was a premature baby. He had he has cerebral palsy. And you can see that his whole spine is really very collapsed. At a year and a half, he should be able to hold himself upright, but he couldn't because of the cerebral palsy. But I'm not sure if you can tell the difference. His lower spine in the red circle is very rounded. That's called a kyphosis. And that actually should be in a sway back. Your low back should be in a sway back. So it's the opposite of what it should be. His upper spine in the blue circle is actually the sway or the curve, inward curve. And that one should be the outward curve. So in other words, Matthew had reverse curves so that his, his ability to hold himself upright was actually in reverse. So on top of the cerebral palsy, it just doesn't have alignment. Can we go back to his case, Eric? So if you take a look at Matthew down in the two lower pictures, you're gonna see on the left-hand side in the red circle, which was the one I had drawn your attention to in the top left, the red circle, his low back, now has a nice arch to it. And that's what you wanna see. So he has a lumbar lordosis or that nice healthy little sway back. And you'll also notice he has an abdominal binder on because he's too weak to use his own stomach muscles to hold himself upright all day. 
So you help him. Let him use his stomach muscles as best as he can, and then add a little corset, essentially, to help him be upright. And if you look on the right-hand mm -hmm. side, you'll see because he has that support with abdominal pressures, which we've talked about with the soda pop can before, you can see Matthew can now hold his head up. So can we go to the next one, Eric? So for Matthew, we used an, a, a body brace, and that would not be for someone like you and me, Christine, who just are slumped over at the coffee table, but for some patients, it would be appropriate. But what I do want you to notice for Matthew inside the red circle is that it's a great big cutout to allow his diaphragm to expand so that we're supporting his spine and his rib cage but still allowing, encouraging, and maximizing his uh, diaphragm movement and chest movement. Can we go to the next slide? There's just four slides for you guys. So if you look at this slide, it's a busy slide. Normally I would be doing it uh, with a PowerPoint. Um, and so we would be bringing those circles up one at a time. But if you would follow the green lines for me, on the left side, Matthew doesn't have any support and you're going to see that those green lines actually come together, those green vertical lines come together on his thoracic spine in his back where he has maximal slouch. That's gonna make it so much more likely that Matthew is gonna develop a scoliosis and a kyphosis, and a scoliosis be meaning his spine will curve to the side, and a kyphosis meaning an extreme hunch like you're seeing. In the right-hand picture, I want you to notice those two vertical, well, one vertical, one horizontal green line. You're gonna notice that vertical green line is very vertical, yay. That's what you want, that's ideal posture. You see how beautiful his head position is, his shoulder, his spine, his hips. And you would also be able to notice if we you know, cleared out some of those extra circles that Matthew's actually holding his own head up. When he has the right postural support, he can lift his own head up and hold it there. So for our patients who don't have cerebral palsy, we're gonna to wanna to be thinking about, what about those patients who just have poor posture and what they come in complaining about is neck pain. So if, when you're looking at neck pain, is it really neck or is it about their whole posture? And the final slide for Matthew, I think, says it all. If we can go back to that one, Eric. So you can see on the left-hand side, that was Matthew at a year and a half. You can see his spine has really collapsed. And then you look in the middle, Matthew is now 10 years old with a beautiful straight spine. And you see him with his mom on the right. I just couldn't be happier for Matthew and his mom. He still has cerebral palsy. I can't wave magic fairy dust and get rid of that any more than I could get rid of the coronavirus. But <laughs> could, could we optimize it? That's what I really want to be looking at. That's a great case and, and definitely shows a lot. Wow. I mean, the, the impact that that has had on Matthew and his family is amazing. Mm -hmm. And and the point that you made about how now he's able to hold his head up once his posture is in the right place, that's that's great. That's that's great for kids, that's great for adults. Right. And I know with the bracing, a lot of my adults are thinking, hmm, can't I just get something like that to wear <laughs> at my desk? And there are posture straps, and I do tell them. You can use them if you need to, because you just, it's a reminder, but after a couple of weeks, I don't want them to use them anymore because the awareness for us adults or we adults is to self monitor when we're slouching. But some of my patients say, I can't, I get in a project and I need something. So I have them use a, a strap, mm -hmm. not a brace for just a couple of weeks as a oops, oops, that reminds them. Mm -hmm. And then pretty soon they, are in that habit, like brushing your teeth every morning and washing your face yeah. every night of, they feel themselves watching and they pop themselves back up. Well, but your, like your, your case, oh yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, it's like kinesio tape. You yes. can go in the opposite direction from where the kinesio tape is holding and supporting you. You can go in the opposite way, but you tend not to because the kinesio tape is saying, go this way. 
go this way. So all the kinesio tape is doing is giving you a little tactile reminder, and that might be all you need is that little reminder, don't forget, sit up straight, don't forget to have your shoulders back or whatever it is that you're working on. For the kids that I see in pediatrics, they tend to have more serious conditions and they may need a lot more than kinesio tape, like little Matthew needing a brace. Yeah. Most adults wouldn't need a brace, they would need uh, some neuromuscular re-education with PT, some strengthening, some stretching, and then maybe, like you say, some straps, some bands, some kinesio tape, something to give them that reminder until they can do it on their own. Wow, I mean, and and this, of course, with my yeah, elbow straight. Not a great one. Right, because if you don't have that elbow straight, so when you have a chance or any of the viewers at home to really do it, you really want to feel that difference. Look in the mirror. When you do it with your elbows straight, you're going to feel your chest lift and you're going to feel your spine extend. But when you do it with your elbows bent, you very typically feel, oh, actually, my head is coming forward. Instead of my head being in beautiful alignment, it's actually coming forward. So you recognize that the shoulders, again, as that saddle of the horse, the shoulders can only work well if the trunk is working with the shoulders, if the horse is working with the saddle. So you really can't separate breathing from doing shoulder rehabilitation. It would be impossible. You're, be no, impossible. you're right. And I, I think, and that's probably why I, ex, I, was a, I didn't exhale when it came up. I was able to exhale when I came up sloppily because I can still talk. But when I do this, it's really hard. You, you want to stop your voice because of that. And uh, we are out of time. Okay. But let's, let's put this picture up for everyone. The picture of the plumeria flower. And let's all raise our arms with elbows straight and take a nice deep breath while we look up and our eyes follow our hand in and come down. And let's do it with the other one too. Raise that arm straight up. Follow it with your eyes so that we can all have better posture and less fear and anxiety and be better able to deal with everything that's coming our way until we find a vaccine. So Mary, thank you You're so, so much You're for so coming welcome. on again. I hope you and your family stay safe. And I know that thank I you. learned a lot. And I think that everyone learned a lot. So thank, thank you to our viewers for joining us. And thank you Think Tech Hawaii for allowing us to be here with you today and our sponsors and donors for supporting us. Aloha, everyone.